Welcome to the next of our series of mini lectures as we go through a set of tutorials on how to design optical systems. Particularly, we're learning how to design a zoom lens. Um, as we've seen before, there are several steps in doing this, and we're slowly working our way through what we need. Uh, we've already come up with conceptual and mathematical model of how light, light behaves when it hits surfaces. Uh, we've just finished understanding how available devices, i.e. lenses, work that allow the manipulation of light. And we're starting to get into this next point, which is to understand what a zoom lens does in terms of some kind of mathical, mathematical model of how light behaves. And we're going to be looking at a zoom lens. In fact, the optical system shown here, consisting of two positive focal length lenses and one negative focal length lens, is in fact a zoom lens. And so let's start to look in a very qualitative and conceptual way how light behaves in a system of lenses, because we need to have more than one lens if we're going to make a zoom lens. Uh, first, let's do a little bit of review and look at the effect of individual lenses. If we have a lens with focal length f, uh, we know that it takes points of light. These may be light rays coming from reflection or, or actual light sources, such as LEDs or light bulbs from what we call the object, and this is a plane, and in a perfect lens, anything on this plane will be imaged. The light rays come and hit the lens. All the light rays that hit the lens bend. Since it's a positive lens, they tend to bend toward the optical axis. And so let's make sure that when I say optical axis, we remember that this dashed line that runs to the center of our optical system is defined to be the optical axis. And all the rays meet again over here on the image plane. And there's a relationship between the, the distance of the object plane from the lens and the distance of the image plane from the lens. And that the relationship is given by the focal length of the lens via this equation right here. So for a lens of a given focal length, uh, if we know where the object is, we know where the image is, or mixing up any combination of these variables. If we know two of them, we can calculate the other of them. Uh, this picture breaks down a little bit, at least this conceptual picture, when we have what are called virtual images. And these happen with positive lenses if the object is very, very close to the lens, or in the case of negative lenses. In this case, the, the rays of light that come from the object in a negative lens bend away from the axis. Instead of coming toward the optical axis, they get further away from the optical axis. And you'll notice that they never physically actually meet, as in this case right here. There's no point of light where the rays actually come together again. Rather, they appear to come together on the same side of the lens as the object was. They appear to come together here. And, and really, this is no different. It's just the rays of light never mean. When I say no different, let me clarify what I mean. Uh, a lens is a device that bends light rays. It can bend them toward the optical axis or it can bend them away from the optical axis. Uh, it tends to bend them a lot the further the ray is from the optical axis and it bends them a little or not at all, for example, for a ray there that strikes the center of the lens on the optical axis. Um, and if you think of an optical system, a, a device of multiple lenses, as simply a thing that bends light rays. That's the conceptual picture you want to keep in mind as we move forward here. So again, a single lens bends light rays depending on its focal length, positive or negative. A device consisting of multiple lenses just bends light multiple times. So let's go ahead and look at this. Here we have our object plane, as we've talked about, and we're going to form an image from the zoom lens on this image plane. We have two lenses of positive focal length and one lens of negative focal length. Uh, we start off with the rays of light, similar to the previous picture, coming. They hit the lens with a positive focal length, and since the lens has a positive focal length, they're going to bend the rays toward the axis. The further the ray is from the optical axis, the more it bends. That's what our equations of lenses tell us. And there we go. They simply bend toward the optical axis and bend more the further they are from the optical axis. Then the rays continue in their new direction, without bending, without changing, until they hit another lens, in this case the negative lens. And now the lens is going to bend them away from the optical axis. The rays going through look something like that. Um, they hit another positive lens. They're going to bend toward the optical axis. And voila, we have a real image. They all meet up on the image plane right there. 
So the way you think about systems of lenses is simply by a series of elements that each bends light depending on the focal length and where the rays hit it. Um, and we're going to calculate ways that we can actually predict how the light is bent in future classes. But I want to give you this very qualitative and conceptual picture of how systems of lenses w work. Because when you read the book, it often talks about images and objects and this and that. And really, optical systems are very, very simple. They're just an array of element that bends lights in particular ways. And so we want to bend light in a way that's predictable that we can call it a zoom lens. And we'll look about that in the next series of lectures. Um, here you see an image of a commercial program. Uh, certainly the calculations can be done by computers now through what are called ray tracing packages. And this is a ray tracing package that I own called Optics Lab. We'll be working with this in the future. And it shows that, in fact, this is what happens if we do a very exact mathematical calculation of how light rays bend through a system. So let's clarify just a few things here. Um, because sometimes this picture of rays bending needs a little bit of additional clarification. Uh, here we have the system that was shown before with uh, uh, two points on our object that are being imaged over here, forming a real image on the image plane. After going through an optical system of three lenses, we've not drawn all the rays by any means, just three representative rays from each point. Uh, what would happen if you stuck your eye at the image plane? Um, now let's go ahead and stick an eyeball in there. And in fact, you would see nothing. You would see a blur. You'd not see the object. Because your eyeball does not look at an image. You can't put an image plane directly on your eyeball uh, because it doesn't work. And the reason for that is that on an image plane, we are actually forming an image on a planar surface. If we held a piece of paper here and there wasn't a lot of background light, you would see actually a representation of your object. If you put a piece of film or an electronic detector, such as that on a, a CCD camera here, you would in fact see an image formed. But if you put your eyeball here, you do not see the formation of an image because your eyeball, one, cannot focus, and it actually is an optical system itself. If you want to image something by eye, you essentially need to move your eyeball back away and put another lens in what's called an eyepiece that will create an image and re-image this on your eyeball. And your book talks about this, and it spends quite a lot of time talking about human vision and the human eye, and I, I'm not going to go into it in a lot of detail. Another thing about optical systems is there is a way to simplify these optical systems significantly. Um, and that is if you have an optical system and you squish the lenses very close together, such that the spacing between the lenses is much, much less than any of their focal lengths, um, then, in fact, the overall focal length, or you can represent this optical system as a single lens, with focal length f, and the focal length is simply uh, the sum of the other focal lengths, or, or 1 over the sum of the focal lengths, where that's f1, that's f2, and that's f3. So for an optical system where lenses are very close together, we can treat it as a single lens, and we don't need to go through any uh, complications or calculations about calculating how the light, light rays bend in each case. And so that's an overview of how we develop systems of lenses. In the coming classes, we'll talk about various mathematical techniques that allow us to calculate how these imaging systems behave.